are following major, major breaking news tonight. The Washington Post first reporting tonight, Fox News confirming the Clinton and the DNC. They, after lying for a year, helped finance the research for that fake news anti-Trump dossier. And also breaking minutes ago, Hillary Clinton's former spokesman, Brian Fallon. They're like racing. Perez is the first. Uh, I regret I didn't know about Christopher Steele's hiring pre-election. If I had, I would have volunteered to go to Europe and try to help him. Oh, really? Here with reaction is the author of Defeating Jihad, the Make America Great Again Coalition Chief Strategist, former Deputy Assistant to the President, Sebastian Gorka, Fox News legal analyst, Greg Jarrett. What I always love about you is you come with a, a, a with research on everything. You start where you want. Uranium One, the dossier. The confidential informant cannot be gagged. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court in a... But he's been gagged. He has a, a non-disclosure. But it does not prevent him from speaking to Congress. The U.S. Supreme Court said so. McGrain versus Doherty is the case. You cannot gag a witness when Congress wants to talk this to that This is why witness. I love Greg Jarrett for all of you at home. He always knows his stuff. All right, keep going. All right. Uh, the Clinton dossier. What strikes me is that Christopher Steele... Uh, went to the went to Moscow and talked to the Kremlin and gathered false evidence. The Wait, victim he here, paid for it. Yeah, yeah. The victim here is the president of the United States now, and Hillary Clinton's campaign in the DNC was apparently paying for this for propaganda, right. for lies, for disinformation from the Russians during the campaign. Oh, Robert Mueller. Are you awake tonight? If there's if there's collusion, it's Hillary Russia collusion, not Trump Russia <sighs> collusion. You know, I've been predicting this, Dr. Gorka, this massive boomerang for a long time. I've known that a lot of this evidence was out there and that it was all coming. And I've been telling my audience it's coming. It's coming now where the floodgates are opening, if you will. It's like the, the last scene from that great Tom Clancy movie, The Hunt for Red October, where the bad submarine commander launches the torpedo and it comes back and it sinks his own vessel. That's what the Russian collusion story has done for the DNC and for Hillary. Let's stop using the word collusion because the evidence we now have is about subversion, it's about sabotaging the political process, and it's about propaganda. In the, in the Cold War, the Soviet Union used what was called active measures to undermine our democracy. This is the Democrat Party, this is the Hillary campaign, using active measures to undermine Donald Trump and to undermine the democratic process in America. It is a shocking story. And, and what really stinks here is Mueller, Rosenstein, Andrew Weissman, and James Comey appear to have covered it all up, the Uranium One deal racketeering scheme of the Russians and money paid to Hillary Clinton and a sleeper agent getting close to Clinton. They never notified Congress. They have a legal duty to notify Congress. Congress would have stopped the sale of the asset. Why would you ever... Especially in light of everything the media and Democrats have been saying about hostile actor Vladimir Putin. Why, who in their right <laughs> mind would give Vladimir Putin 20% of America's uranium and then all the money that flowed back? It stunk to high heaven from day one. Now we just have the evidence. There are two Show things you that. never sell to the Russians. Plutonium and uranium yeah. with which you make uh, nuclear weapons. Right. They have uh, 1,200 strategic nuclear weapons aimed at us right this minute. And we're supplying them the, the nuclear material? They I all mean, signed off on it. I and know. then all this money flows this, back to them, sure. Dr. Gorka. That's the big part of the story. So the cover-up afterwards, the destruction of evidence, the gag order, that's bad in and of itself. But the fact is, these people who are supposed to be investigating this administration that has done nothing wrong, they were complicit. Hillary Clinton approved this deal. We, we, they are making a big deal about $100,000 worth of Facebook ads by Russia, half of which occurred after the election. This isn't $100,000 worth of ads. This is stuff to make nuclear weapons being given to Vladimir Putin. Can we just ingest the enormity of what we're talking about now? This, this is a massive scandal. I have said, and I stand by this tonight, 
they sold out America's national security. Yes, and absolutely. And there's so much more to come. Let's talk about potential crimes. Jeff Sessions, who recused himself, you may recall, in his confirmation hearing from anything related to Hillary Clinton, he said it not once, not twice, three times, can still appoint a special counsel to investigate Hillary Clinton over Uranium One, her interference on behalf of UBS uh, with the IRS, and, and received an enormous amount of money to Bill Clinton and their foundation, and arms sales. All of that can be the subject of the special counsel investigation. And while you're at it, let's throw in the email case because to me as a lawyer, oh. it is a clear case of the violation Mishandling. of the Espionage felony. Act. Destroying evidence, right. felony, obstruction of justice, deleting, uh, breaking up, uh, it uh, you know. It would be 110 counts based on 110 classified documents. I want to go back, Dr. Gorka, you know, Bill Clinton's trip. He wanted to ask his own wife's State Department to approve meeting, meetings with Russian nuclear officials. Okay, that's insane. Gets double his speaking fee. He is being paid by a bank that has a renaissance, that has a financial interest in Uranium One. Then he does meet with Vladimir Putin, and his wife signs off on the deal, and then the $145 million kickback. Now, what other evidence do you need to know that they were not putting? the security of this country as their first priority? Well, you don't need it. It, it, it. Look, 108 emails of TSSCI, highest level SAP classification on a private homebrew server. You know, we, we, we expect this from the Clintons. They're the most corrupt political clan in modern American history. But the issue is how the establishment dealt with it under the Obama administration. How somebody who was a suspect in that investigation was allowed to be the counsel to Hillary Clinton. How the Blackberries were destroyed destroyed and how the laptops that the FBI had were also destroyed the by the federal government. That's a banana republic. We yeah, have to have right. Mueller. <laughs> Mueller has to be fired. And right now, AG Sessions has to have a national security special S prosecutor. S listen, Attorney General needs to wake up now. This is not a game anymore. Our security. Holder, Clinton, Mueller, Rosenstein, they all knew in two thousand and nine. Don't forget and they McCain. approved the deal, Greg. And and Holder actually sat on the CFIUS committee, if you can believe he that. He was one of the ones that signed off, one of the nine. Yeah, it was a unanimous decision. Hillary Clinton presides over it. All right, guys, we'll have you guys back tomorrow, too. This is a Fox News alert. I'm Brett Baer in Washington. Tonight, President Trump is claiming vindication over confirmation. The Clinton campaign and the Democrat Party, the DNC, helped fund an opposition research dossier filled with various unproven allegations, all suggesting then-candidate Trump had direct ties to the Russians and might somehow be compromised. Over the past two days, the Trump administration has touted the significant developments in this story, new investigations. Investigations. They've also talked about a boom on Wall Street and growing confidence on Capitol Hill that tax cuts may actually be real this year. Our latest Fox News polls showed President Trump's approval numbers sliding just before that, ending on the 24th, that rating dropping four points from last month to just 38 percent. Some suggestion it may have been tied to the dust up over that condolence call and the coverage of it. But with all these new developments, will that change his approval rating? The Trump administration will tell you they don't care. Aides say the president has had two good days. And we have some breaking news tonight about those investigations. We have Fox team coverage tonight. Doug McElway with a big picture look at the collusion accusation timeline and how we arrived at this point. Catherine Harridge with that breaking news and the latest on the revelations in these investigations. And we start off with Chief White House Correspondent John Roberts. Good evening, John. Good evening to you, Brett. First of all, let's start with that unverified dossier. And to put this in perspective, this is the same dossier that the former FBI director, James Comey, felt compelled to tell the president about in secret at Trump Tower back in January. A one-on-one -on -one meeting that got the ball rolling on those now famous Comey memos, which led to the appointment of a special prosecutor.
On his way to Texas to review Hurricane Harvey relief and headline a Republican Party fundraiser, President Trump unloaded on the revelations that the Clinton campaign and DNC funded the salacious, unverified dossier about him. Well, I think it's very sad what they've done with this fake dossier. It was made up, and I understand they paid a tremendous amount of money. And Hillary Clinton always denied it. The Democrats always denied it. And now only because it's going to come out in a court case, they said, yes, they did it. They admitted it. And they were embarrassed by it. But I think it's a disgrace. It's just really a very, it's a very sad, it's a very sad commentary on politics in this country. President Trump also weighed in on the investigations three congressional committees have launched into how Russia acquired 20 percent of America's uranium reserves. I think the uranium sale to Russia and the way it was done so underhanded with tremendous amounts of money being passed, I actually think that's Watergate modern age. In another departure turned press conference, which the president has come to embrace, he dismissed the passionate criticisms of Arizona Senator Jeff Flake, who yesterday accused Mr. Trump of conduct unbecoming an American president. Even before the campaign, I mean, he came out with his horrible book, and I said, who is this guy? The first time I saw him on television, I said, I assume he's a Democrat. Should you be more civil as a leader of this country? Well, I think the press makes me more uncivil than I am. You know, people don't understand. I went to an Ivy League college. Uh, I was a nice student. I did very well. Uh, I'm a very intelligent person. Despite sharp dissent from Flake and Tennessee Senator Bob Corker, the president told Fox business anchor Lou Dobbs in an interview airing tonight that all is well within the Republican Party. We have actually in the Republican Party, in a true sense, we have great unity. I was with the Senate yesterday, the entire Republican Senate. And other than two people, I tell you, there was a lot of love in that room. While he didn't use the word love, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, who has had plenty of run-ins with the president, did suggest he has a lot of support in the party. Most people are working for a living. Most people don't know who Bob Corker and Jeff Flake are. Most people want President Trump to succeed. A lot of people don't like his tweeting uh, and his punching down and kicking every bark dog. Mostly Republicans don't like that. But I'm going to be around him uh, for the rest of his term, I hope. The president reiterated that any plan by Congress to limit tax-free deductions to 401k retirement plans is off the table, a position that reignited his feud with Senator Bob Corker yesterday. But this morning, the president was contradicted by the chief tax writer in the House. Kevin Brady, who is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, said this morning it could be on the table. Well, maybe it is, and maybe we'll use it as negotiating, but I trust, trust me, that's one of the great things. You know, there are certain elements of deals you don't want to negotiate with. 401ks, and Kevin knows it, and I think Kevin Brady is fantastic, but he knows how important 401ks are. And the president spoke for the first time in person about Maisha Johnson's assertion that the president was insensitive in his condolence call to her last Tuesday. I was really nice to her. I respect her. I respect her family. I certainly respect LaDavid. Uh, he, who I, by the way, called LaDavid right from the beginning, just so you understand. They put a chart in front, LaDavid, says LaDavid Johnson. So I called right from the beginning, there's no hesitation. One of the great memories of all time, there was no hesitation. I think she's a fantastic woman. I was extremely nice to her, extremely respectful. And a big announcement coming from the president tomorrow. He is expected to declare the opioid crisis in America a national emergency and will outline some steps that the administration is going to take to battle it, including, Brett, an attempt to reduce demand, not just supply. Brett? Another busy day at the White House. Seems like that Always. happens a lot. John Roberts, live in the North Lawn. John, thanks.